Well, hey everybody, welcome back today. We have a lovely set of the PVM 4 Series. And these are the two portable, smaller versions of the PVM 4 Series. On the right here, we have the 5041Q. Now this one is an extremely compact model with a five inch screen display. Now next to that is the eight inch 4 series and this is the 8045Q. So this model has a higher resolution tube, it's 450 TV lines and there are other 4 series below this one with a lower line count on that tube. It also expands a couple of features on here that the others do not have. These are the two monitors we're looking at today. They have both been serviced. If you'd like to see some more information on the servicing of these, please do check in the description of this video. Let's start this off by taking a closer look at the 8045Q. Now the 8045Q is built more like the larger PVMs and we've got our power button over here on the right and then we have six knobs to control things like volume and then all types of screen controls. Please do note that if you're using RGB on this monitor, you will only be able to adjust brightness, contrast, and volume. Chroma, phase, and aperture are only going to apply to other video signals like composite, S-video, and then in component video. This monitor also has manual color controls right here that you can use a small screwdriver, stick them in there, and adjust the gains and biases for each color line. This model does include a button for degauss and then 16 by 9 mode. It has an HV delay, under scan, blue only mode down here. And then up top with these two buttons, these are, these are going to be your input controls and how you select your inputs. And then this is your sync control. Now here's our input area on the back of the monitor. We have a line A that has YC or S video in and out, and then also composite video in and out with mono audio in and out. And then we have a line B, which only has composite video and mono audio support. And then we have our RGB slash component input down here at the bottom and our external sync to the right of that. And there is no output for RGB components, so you cannot daisy chain that signal out of this monitor, but you can daisy chain any other signal out. Now this one does have options for power, so you have your normal AC in, which this one is rated for 120 volts, and then you can use a 12 volt DC power supply with 3.7 amps and power it using DC power. And then finally, you do have battery bays, but I've never seen a functioning battery to this point, and I would not rely on those batteries if you did have one. Uh, but there was a battery system where rechargeable batteries could be used with this monitor. Let's run an RGB demo on this video monitor. Now this one only accepts analog video formats, so you're not gonna get anything over 480i in video resolution. So for our RGBS demo, we're gonna be using Super Nintendo, and we're going to pump 240p into the RGBS input. Now if we look at the 5041Q model, right off the bat you can tell that we've got some different things on here. Obviously we've got an overlay on our screen that is a plastic layer. It's held in place with some screws and that is just a screen protector and it could work as some anti-glare but it definitely creates a reflection where you can see me right there. Since this is a more compact model, there's not as much room for buttons and options down here at the front. So we are going to be dropping a lot of those adjustments. We only have five knobs on here that are adjustable. We've dropped aperture controls and we have just one input switcher right here on the front that it lets us select between our line and our RGB. 
HV delay, blue only, and an under scan mode. And then we have our power button. And that's all there is on the front here. All right, so one of the coolest things Sony did on this model was add this amazing little kickstand right here. And that kickstand lets you raise your Sony PVM5041Q up a little bit and have a cool little angle. And uh, this is just one little fun feature. It's very heavy duty. It works well. I really wish they would have uh, incorporated this with at least the 8-inch series. That would have been quite awesome. On the back here of our input board, we do only have two lines or video inputs on this monitor. That is a composite video input, which you can daisy chain out. And then we have RGB and component and then sync. And there is no daisy chaining out of any of these signals from this monitor. So you can send it in, but you can't split it and run it off to something else. You can only use a composite loop with this monitor. Now there are some more selector switches up here to the right for sync, RGB and component. 4x3 or 16x9 mode. So those are controllable up here. We do have the same power options for AC and DC on the back of this monitor to power it. And this also did have a single battery bay, which we use the same family of batteries as the larger model. Now we're going to run the same RGBS demo into this 5 inch PVM. We're going to again use the Super Nintendo and Super Metroid and just try to see how this looks a little bit different in comparison to that other tube which would have had a more defined scan line. You're not really getting that scan line effect but you are getting a high resolution picture with a pixelated look more than a scan line look. Now the last demonstration I want to do in the video today is going to be a video loop and we're going to daisy chain these two monitors together. Now we'll have to use composite video for this daisy chain, but I'm just going to use a BNC cable to go from the output on one of the monitors into the input on the video A line of the smaller monitor. All right, well, that's going to do it for a close look at these two monitors. Now, if you do want to see more details like high resolution photos of the repairs and restorations done to these two individual monitors, please do check the links in the description for the video. I went through, tore these almost completely apart, cleaned every inch of them, inspected everything, put it back together. And I even showed some pictures of before and after adjustments were done because they did need things like deflection adjustments yoke adjustments and convergence changes and things like that. So if you are interested in that information, please do check out the links in the description. Thanks again for joining me today on this video. If you have any comments about these two monitors or anything else CRT related or really anything, just leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed it, please hit me with a like and I will see you guys next time with some more retro content.